I'm Matt. I'm Shane. And if you like what you hear, make sure you hit that thumbs up button real hard. And make sure you subscribe to Comic Movie Marks. And also click that little bell for all of the notifications. Whee! Always remember, if Trailer Trash can do it, anyone can do it. Hello and welcome everyone to another Comic Movie Marks video. Woo! You clicked on the link. You know what we're talking about. Godzilla 2014. That's right. We are doing a retro review of this fantastic Godzilla movie. Obviously because Godzilla King of Monsters is coming out, we got to go back and look at 2014's Godzilla, right? Exactly. I'm glad we did already. I'm just going to throw out there the stats real fast. Um, and I, I guess we'll kind of incorporate it a little bit as we're talking. Godzilla 2014, 6.4 out of 10 on IMDb, 75% on Rotten Tomatoes, 62% on Metacritic. I think those will be a little bit important later on uh, in the review. Worldwide, $529 million on an estimated budget of $160 million. We're going to actually start off with cons on this one. For me, I didn't have a whole lot of cons in this. Just to come out of the gate, uh, biggest thing that bugged me the most, the pronunciation of Nevada. It's fucking Nevada. Boom! <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> because it's pronounced Nevada. Nevada. No, Nevada. Say it with me. Nevada. Nevada. No, you're saying it wrong. Nevada. Obviously, we're in Nevada, so that's why we have to make sure it's pronunciated right. Yeah. I cannot tell you how many times, like, artists or some people come here for a show or something like that. And they'll be like, yeah, we're here in Nevada. The crowd will yell at them, Nevada! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boo, it's Nevada, you idiots! <laughs> yeah, it's it's a big deal here. Yeah, exactly. Is it Arkansas? No. It's Arkansas. <laughs> so there. <laughs> <laughs> So aside from that, I, I really didn't have a whole lot of cons uh, in this. It has some conveniences, uh, you know, I guess if you want to nitpick a little bit. It's a, it's a pretty basic plot. I know a lot of the complaints when this movie originally came out was not really caring about the characters too much. I, I disagreed with that. I actually really enjoyed, I, I thought it was well done just the dynamic with Brian Cranston's character and, you know, as the dad and his son who's in the military and th that whole dynamic, it wasn't overdone and I, I thought it worked well. So I guess I'm kind of rolling into a little bit of prose. Matt, do you have any cons? Aaron Taylor Johnson's character is, is probably the biggest negative of the movie. It's the thing is though, you, you kill Cranston off and you're like, okay, well now this guy has got to carry the rest of the movie. He is your focal point of the movie now, other than Godzilla himself. Yeah, he's kind of expressionless, and a lot of people associate that, well, he's military. Well, there's also some other aspects to it as well. Like, just also the way he acts as a military officer, because he's a lieutenant, for God's sakes. Uh, it's just hard for me to believe that guy's a lieutenant in anything. It was always, uh, it always kind of bugged me. He works for the most part. He is probably the most conveniently placed person I've ever seen in a movie. Uh, close. He's up there for sure. When they make the joke about, you know, this train ain't Amtrak, and, like, yet he's just kind of fucking amtrak his way around and shit. <laughs> and he's constantly getting picked up like a hobo that's just, like, somewhat useful. Uh, so, it's... It, he is kind of the low point of it. Even, an, even kind of panning back to Elizabeth Olsen's character, too, I thought she was kind of... Uh, she's your connection to the area where it's gonna be, and he's kind of the one coming in. I don't know. It was a, it's a weird, weird thing with those two, and you really don't feel any chemistry. And then right, right after this, then you have Age of Ultron, where they're brother and sister. So it just really <laughs> makes it creepy. Yeah, that that part makes it a little bit weird. I, I actually thought they had a decent amount of chemistry. I enjoyed aspects of it. I do agree with you. The Brody character is incredibly convenient. He, yeah, he bounces around and there's a lot of this movie that the plot conveniences are just glaring but they didn't bug me just because of how the movie was was laid out it worked it worked well and yeah you kind of like okay it is what it is kind of thing it's not supposed to be some deep storyline so it works you kind of chuckle at it but it wasn't one of those like eye rolling for me well he is probably the most unlucky lucky person <laughs> I've ever seen in my life because yeah. he everybody dies on the train tracks he's covered in mud he still survives he's on the boat the monster's literally three inches from his face or when he's trying to get away after they blow up the eggs and somehow he 
makes that one little bit of noise. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, God the fuck out of here. He just keeps going. He's like Mick Foley from wrestling, man. He just fucking takes <laughs> right. eat shit, yeah. eat shit, but keeps going through it. My you know? God, so. he's been broken in half. <laughs> yeah. And I, I may be jumping ahead a little bit here, but I think that's why this movie, when you look back at it, it didn't do all that well critically i remember and and matt and i when we left the theater were like oh that was actually pretty enjoyable i don't know why it didn't do so well and it's still you know 6.4 out of 10 on imdb that's hovering right around mid-range that's that's not the greatest score in in the world obviously so i i feel like a lot of it has to do with that that there was such focus on the characters as opposed to the monsters uh see the tweet from earlier (laughs) 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 And with that, the characters don't really work all that well. So the story built around the characters isn't the greatest story in the world either. So I can see why some people may have felt a little lower on this movie, may have graded it a little bit lower. But, um, I mean, for me, I think it just is is one of those things that I can ignore. It does ultimately work. So I say we just roll into the pros. And this, by far, is one of the greatest builds to a match in modern history. Yes. You think Starcade 97 was a great build between <laughs> Sting and Hogan? You think Andre versus Hogan was a great build? You think The Rock versus Austin at WrestleMania 17 was a great build? You ain't seen nothing. Godzilla versus whatever the fuck those things were. <laughs> <laughs> those mutos is, I don't know if you have to be a wrestling fan to enjoy it. I have no idea. But when you watch it, There is a dead ringer to how they set up wrestling matches. When you have the big fight at the end, when you want to save it for that final meeting, yeah, okay, the guys, they have a scuffle in the ring, they might break apart, that's done, you know? They never have the match. You know, somebody maybe gets the upper hand for a second, powders out, boom, we never have the match. It's just these glimpses at what's going on. It's them coming down, seeing each other for the first time. Are they going to land blows? Is this going to be the moment? No, we don't see it. It is so perfectly well done. Gareth Edwards has to be a wrestling fan. He has to be. I have no idea if he is, but it is so well done. So fucking well done. You just get glimpses of it. And then finally at the end, even with them throwing it down in the background, you get that perspective. And then, boom, the big showdown happens. WrestleMania 3, Starcade 97 happens, and it is fucking awesome. Wow, fuck. (laughs) That was incredibly well put. But, yeah, I completely agree. And even watching it back, even though I've seen how the build happens, I still enjoyed it so much more, even knowing exactly like the anticipation was building as I'm watching this movie like oh fuck I can't wait and I know a lot of people back in 2014 forever ago it feels like oh it's a good times back then (laughs) I know a lot of people didn't like that about this movie but I I loved it and I think it it ages well because of that when you when you look back you know five years later where the sequel is about to come out and it, it just is built so incredibly well that you, when you finally get it, it's the payoff is well worth it. And there's some, some great shots. This is such a beautifully put together movie. The CGI is near flawless. I mean, there are a couple things here and there, but man, it is just for what they are trying to accomplish. Holy shit. Like it just is scale, the scale of what's going on. There, there's when I there's moments in this thing where I just kind of like wow that is just so well done and one of the first things is when Godzilla first arrives in San Francisco and he's kind of like tipping the 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 battleships over and the, some of those rockets are hitting the bridge and stuff and then they're looking over and the tanks are just sitting there you know they're telling the battleship guys stop firing stop firing you just see all these rockets coming at the bridge. Holy shit, are they just going to blow the fuck out of the bridge? And then Godzilla, out of frame, just comes up into frame. And it's just getting plastered by these fucking missiles. So well done. It takes things out of frame, puts them in frame for the scale, the effect that you get. It happens in the final battle as well with the smoke, all the crap going on. And somehow a giant monster of Godzilla's stature is somehow hidden in smoke. He disappears in these moments comes up out of the nowhere between buildings. It's just the scale and the perspective is phenomenal. The halo drop, the when they do the halo drop, is just fucking... Be- between the audio, the visual, yeah, the atmosphere of that moment, 
The Halo drop is beautiful. Shane and I were actually talking about this beforehand. I, I will arguably say that this might be one of the most beautifully modern day shot movies I have ever seen with all of the CGI that's in it. Yeah. And usually sometimes CGI can take you out of a movie because of that whole uncanny valley type thing because you can start seeing the flaws or, mm -hmm. or something like that. I never felt that way. Nope. It actually was the opposite. It, it brought me in. Like just how I was glued to this movie and, and just again, visually how well it it's just built up and, and some of the placement and some of the shots is just, yeah, it's enough just to suck you right in. And with, with the downside of some of the characters, yeah, it, it, I think it just overcomes it. And because of how the movie is, is put together and because of the builds, because of the final battle, because of just how beautifully shot it is, it just looks fucking fantastic. And and I, I had a blast watching this again, and I'm, I'm glad I bought it. Speaking of blast, the atomic breath shot. Oh, man. I, I couldn't wait for that. Tell me how you do that any fucking better. You don't. You don't. The smoke is hiding him and you just slowly hear it dun, 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 dun. the build the look you still can't see him but you see the scales just turning blue then finally he comes out of the smoke and just blasts the shit out of that thing and you can even hear the soldiers in the back holy shit what is yeah. that <laughs> like, like you you get this you get the feel the scale because they're doing it from the people's perspective they do it both ways they get the monster's perspective and the people like what you would be seeing with these two titans battling, three titans total. It's, and when the male gets killed, whacked up against the fucking building, the sound it makes, boom, like the fucking, just sucks the air out. Fucking phenomenal. And of course, when the uh, final Mudo, Mudo gets beheaded, atomic breath down the throat. Yes. Ooh, oh. That is a whole new outlook on a mouthful. <laughs> So overall, I mean, there's nothing much more that we could say that we haven't already said. This movie is just so enjoyable. Yeah, there's some some downfalls for me. They, I, I wish there would have been a little bit more of Brian Cranston. I wish he probably would have lived and maybe been in the sequel. I, I actually really enjoyed his character, and I felt like they could have gone elsewhere with it. But aside from all that, still such an enjoyable movie. I gave it a 3.9 out of 5 marks. I have come to truly appreciate it. I don't know if it's because of the time we're in now and just what we see more and more of lately, but it's a beautiful movie. It is absolutely stunning to watch. Obviously not the best characters in the world. Godzilla being the best. It's overwhelming almost to watch the movie. It feels fantastic to watch that movie. Gareth Edwards is showing us his flavor of filmmaking in this, and I always appreciate those type of movies more than other ones. So for me, this is going to be 4.4 4 out of 5 Dang, marks. All right. I fucking love this movie. I own it. It's actually technically my first digital download I ever bought. So I had to go back on the old Amazon and look through, and it's the very first one. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love that movie. I can watch it many, many times in case I don't see you. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. You're one of very few <laughs> to make it to the end. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to Comic Movie Marks Podcast and hit the notification bell. You know, all these fucking YouTube channels say this shit, so I'm going to say it now. Yes, it's perfect. And if you want to hear our full podcast, you can check out our podcast on iTunes or any other podcast subscription service. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks again. Yo!